Reshma Nambi from m tv here and I have with me today the State Labour Member for Melton District and the Parliamentary Secretary for Health, Steve Mackey. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah. Um, so let me just shoot straight into it. Um, I was told that in your past life you were um, worked in the ambulance sector and now in politics. So why extremely contradicting but totally relevant to different settings? Sure. Um, I worked in the ambulance um, service for 15 years as a paramedic and then I went from uh, the ambulance service to the ambulance union uh, as the assistant secretary and secretary for 23 years. Uh, and in July of 2018 um, I decided to retire. Uh, and um, that lasted for three months and then leading into the last uh, state Victorian state election, which was November 2018, um, I got a phone call to say, would I stand in the seat of Melton uh, from um, one of the senior uh, members of uh, the government and also uh, the Premier. I had a chat with the Premier at the time and um, so I decided to stand in the seat of Melton and here I am. Well, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Um, and I heard from someone that it was just um, a three week of campaign period that you had before the 2018 elections and you've won. Clearly you've done something right. So w w what's that secret behind that um, short campaign and still you've made it and clearly Melton has grown immensely over the past. So how do you envision this support that you've been providing carry on to the future? Yeah, sure. Uh, look, it was a very short campaign, you know, three weeks and two weeks of that was pre-poll. So it was really, I, I didn't sort of formulate the, the, the three-week campaign. It was already formulated for me. So um, fortunately for me, I suppose I had a bit of a profile coming into the campaign with my background in ambulance and also at the ambulance union. I'd been involved in many, many um, media stories and, and issues around ambulance leading in. Uh, so people probably knew me in the, in the local area and hopefully they had a bit of confidence in me. And I think that, you know, um, the big issue in Melton was to deliver a new Melton hospital. Um, with my health background, I made it the number one priority. And I think people sort of felt that, um, given my background, that I could deliver on that. Well, that's fantastic. Um, and thank you for that. Thank you for bringing um, what we consider the most important aspect in today's world, healthcare, definitely. And given that, that Melton was able to witness the development of a hospital during your term has been fantastic. Um, so let me shoot into what I think is the buzzword in today's time. So clearly electricity and gas shortages. So um, it was mentioned during the federal budget release, which got um, the, sec the second budget release for this year, which was done yesterday. It was mentioned that the electricity electricity and the gas prices are definitely going to go up by 50% within the next two years. And this is linked to the electricity and gas shortages that we see here now. So um, given that Melton is one of the outer western suburbs, there's definitely cost of housing, cost of small businesses struggling, cost of living is increasing. So how do you see the electricity and gas prices rising up, adding to the cost of living rising up? How do you see the community is going to respond to that? Well, um, obviously there's a projection of um, uh, energy prices rising and that's concerning, but um, I'm, I'm hopeful that obviously the cost of living uh, that people are experiencing now that both at state and federal level, um, there are some um, mechanisms or, or, or items or projects that you know, state government, the state government and the federal government have implemented to try and keep the cost of living down and deal with some of these things. And I know, you know one of the little things that um, uh, the state government had introduced was the $250 energy bonus. Now I know $250 for some people may not go far, but as part of that program there was a compare energy process where people could compare how much their energy costs are now against whether there were, were better deals. People were not, um, did not have to change if they chose not to, but they still received the $250. And that's just one of the things. Um, you know, there's, you know, there's a number of things in supporting people with their, their, their home loans and things like that, you know, first home buyers, things like that. There's no doubt it's a worry that cost of living is going up. There's no doubt the rising inflation rate is a concern. And I know our government, the Andrews Labor government, is constantly constantly looking at things to provide um, 
offsets for those cost of living rises. And I know that the federal government is trying to do the same with the things like improving access to childcare, free childcare. And you know, with, with, uh, in the state of Victoria from next year, you know, three-year-old kinder and four-year-old kinder being free. Uh, and that allows women to go back to work uh, if they choose, or, or, or their partners to go back to work if they choose. And, and that's one of the greater productivity elements within our community. So they're just some of the things. And then you look at free TAFE courses here in Victoria, and I think we're up to now about 70 free TAFE courses. And then, of course, the, recently the government, uh, the state government announced uh, the uh, uh, paying of the HEX fee for people wanting to go into the nursing profession. Um, so they're just some of the things, and there's many more, um, they're just some that I highlight. And I know the federal government are looking at that also, to try and offset some of these cost of living um, um, burdens, I would call them. Well, yeah, certainly it has given me a good segue. Um, now that you've mentioned about what the Andrews Labor government has done for uh, the cost of living, certain offsets along those lines, and also certain improvements in infrastructure. Uh, it's a good segue into what I'm going to ask you next because um, I saw a Facebook post on your socials uh, about how you've announced, um, along with a couple of the um, leaders within the Melton District, that the Andrews Labor government is funding the development of a primary school project there. And from memory, the post was um, done in October. So clearly we are not far from there now, but what, what's the progress along those lines? And I was, from what I understand, it's a 21 million uh, funding for that specific project. So this is clearly a demonstration of what the Labour government and yourself and your rest of the team is doing for the community in Melton. So um, what's the response to that and what's the progress on that? Well, um, I've got to say in the three and a half, four years that I've been elected in Melton, uh, while I said my number one priority was health, I think the two key issues for us as a Labor government is health and education, and clearly jobs. Um, I know in my electorate of Melton, we've, we've, we've um, improved infrastructure and education, so school facilities and early learning childhood facilities. Um, we've, we've brought in about $500 million worth of infrastructure builds, and I think the example that you're raising is the recent announcement of the Melton South Primary School where if the Andrews Labor government is re-elected, then that school will receive $21.32 million to upgrade the school. The school is uh, next year has its 100th year anniversary. So it, the timing of this announcement is fantastic. And I know the school community were ecstatic about that announcement. Uh, to think that they will modernise their school, um, provide you know, great facilities for the students and for the staff, can only de deliver better outcomes. And I could sit here for the whole program and, and rattle off many more schools in my electorate that have either received enormous amounts of funding from the government. And we're building a primary school every year in my electorate. Now, we've opened up two new primary schools in the last two years. There's another one to open up next year at Thornhill Park. There's another one that will be built and opened up in 2024 at Brookfield. And we've just announced this week two new schools, schools to be built, a new secondary school at Cobblebank and a new primary school at Tool and Waters at Weirview. So we have to keep up with building this infrastructure because the population growth in Melton is enormous. Um, 7,000 people moving in every year, 50 babies born a week. Um, so we have to keep up with this infrastructure. Well, that's fantastic. Um, do you see that with so much of promises along the infrastructure line, which I'm sure your team will work towards, how does the labour compensate for those sort of infrastructure? Do we have the sufficient resources specifically for people within Melton? Is it offering more jobs? If so, do we have sufficient people to actually bridge that gap? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, as you know, when you build all these infrastructure bills, such as the new hospital coming and all of these schools, we've also announced level crossing removals, a new um, train station for Melton. You need people to do the construction of that. So. There's many, many construction jobs there uh, that will be created and have been created. And um, there, there, there are enough people to um, work in those industries in the construction industry. But of course, it's, it's pretty tight. But we're hopefully recruiting more to that industry and training more people to that industry. And again, you know, I, I'll make reference to the free TAFE courses. And they are providing the new future workforces. And that's what we're hoping to do. And I'm pleased to say that this week we've announced in Melton that we will also be building a new TAFE college. And the primary focus of that TAFE college will be for construction workers uh, and, and training for construction. 
uh, that's the initial focus of that TAFE College. So along with our planning of infrastructure, we're also planning to train people to be able to fill the jobs. Uh, and that's what we'll continue to do because we know that we need to fill those jobs to be able to build these infrastructure builds. That's good. Um, and you mentioned there's Melton's growing, obviously, and there's about 7,000 people moving in every year. Um, and I understand it's a very multicultural community. And when it's very multicultural, it also means that there's going to be diverse workforce, right? Like it's not going to be restricted to construction. And what I'm hearing is there's a lot of opportunities in the construction space, yes, but what sort of work are we doing in other areas to offer employment and offer opportunities for this diverse workforce and the multicultural community that Melton is? Yeah, it's, that's a great question. Um, it, not only in construction, but the other areas that we need to focus on uh, to try and, uh, well, we have created work and that is in aged care, um, in early learning, childhood, early childhood um, learning. Um, Clearly in education, there's many, many uh, positions available for teachers. Uh, and I was with um, a number of um, teacher union delegates last night talking about this issue of trying to attract people into teaching and retain the experienced teachers. So that's another area. Nursing is another area. Uh, and also allied health um, areas. So they're all, they're all areas that we really need to concentrate on and be able to attract people to those industries and those professions but also to retain the people that are there, um, that we don't see an exodus of people that leaves us sh you know, with a real crisis, as in a shortage of staff. Um, and we're very hopeful that we can attract people into those industries. And as I say, by providing supports, whether it's you know, with hex fees, um, whether it's um, free TAFE, those sorts of things, creating facilities like a new TAFE at Melton that you know, the, the, the students can come out of the secondary schools and know that they can go to a TAFE college that's close to home. And also, you know, in building these infrastructure things, keeping people close to their home for work so they can, you know, train at a college, TAFE college, and get a job close by uh, and not have to, you know, jump in their car and drive into the city for employment so they can stay close to home. Yep. Um, and certainly, it's not all about jobs. No. People need fun in their life. Um, so I, I've, I was told that there's 12 approved precinct structure plans in, for the development of Mel Melton City District. So what's happening in that space? Um, the growth in, in Melton, I think it's the, if not the first, the second fastest growing um, local government area in the state, if not in the country. Um, and as you say, you know, there's 12 um, precinct plans that are um, uh, actually going to be developed over the next few years. but. The growth is enormous right now, and you know, when you when you build these residential developments, there's many other things that have got to come with it, and that is open space, so parkland, uh, obviously recreational facilities, and that's been really important. So new ovals and things like that, play space for kids, community centres, and the Melton City Council have been very successful in being able to deliver a lot of this infrastructure with support from the state, and in some cases with support from federal government grants. And as I say, Melton City Council has been very successful. There's a fund through the state that's called the Growth Suburbs Fund, and they make many, many applications. And I think over the last five or six years, they've received something like $47.5 million to build things like sporting, recreational, parkland, community centres, those sorts of things. So when they're developing these residential developments, the people that live there have got other facilities to utilise that make up their whole life, as in, yeah, it's not all about work, it's not all about education, it's also about fun, movement, exercise and just enjoyment. Yeah. Well, that's very nice. So I, was, I understand that Steve is not just a person who, does, um, who delivers amazing work for the community, but also supports the local businesses there. So I noticed that you shop from a local sporting shop in Melton. <laughs> so can I ask, what did you buy from there? <laughs> um, I was in the shopping centre on the weekend, that's right, and, uh, and I knew about this shop because um, I'd seen that they sponsored an event in recent times and I did say to them that I would come in and buy a pair of runners. So I had to buy a pair of runners and I went in there on, on the weekend and I found a lovely pair of runners. Uh, so that's what I bought. Well, yeah, um, I'm sure that would have made the local business owners very happy. Someone who's not, who's not only delivering the work for the community but also supporting the community. 
And that's clearly a good demonstration of uh, the amazing leader you are. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, so going back to one last question uh, about your personal life. So in your past life, you were in the ambulance space. So what was a day in your life like back then? As an ambulance paramedic? Um, Look, at ambulance it was a fantastic job. As a paramedic, it was a fantastic job. We, we normally start our shifts around 7 o'clock in the morning, and they normally the day shift would be 10 hours long, so you'd finish at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. You never knew what you were coming into work or what you would respond to uh, in an emergency situation. So you have the whole range of emergency cases that you would respond to. You work with another paramedic for the day. Um, so there's two of you that work in the ambulance vehicle. You have a, you're located at a particular ambulance branch and primarily I was located at the Sunshine branch. And you wait around in that branch until you're contacted either by telephone pager or the, what they call was a cell call radio. You had a portable radio that would go off, that would beep and then they would give you, the, the communication centre would give you the, the job that you had to respond to. And if it was an emergency job they would categorise it as a lights and sirens job or urgent but not lights and sirens. Um, and, and they'd give you the details of where the incident was and you would respond to that. You would attend to whatever the incident was and if someone had been injured or sick and then you would, if they needed to go to hospital, you would transport them to hospital, you write up a history and things like that, take their observations and then you would hand them over at the emergency department and hopefully they would then have ongoing treatment at the hospital and, and hopefully have their issue rectified. So. Um, in some cases it could have been quite traumatic because you do go to a whole range of different incidents, whether it be industrial accidents, car accidents, you know, a whole range of other incidents that can be quite traumatic. Um, so it was important to make sure that you had a bit of an outlet where we had some counselling and things like that. But it was, a, it was a fantastic job. Helping people is an amazing, amazing thing to do and making sure that people's welfare is the utmost important and that they're safe and they're okay is fantastic, you know, and you know, on occasions you get to deliver a baby and on occasions you save people's lives by, you know, someone that might go into cardiac arrest and you resuscitate them and that's, it, it is a fantastic feeling to be able to deliver a, a life as in a, an infant, a baby, but also to save someone that was, you know, may have collapsed on the street uh, and technically was dead and you resuscitate them and, and they survive. I mean, it's an amazing it's an amazing job and there are amazing paramedics out there that do a wonderful job. Well, providing care, first-hand care is one thing, but clearly developing resilience through it to, like, to be able to handle all the traumatic incidents and also be strong towards it and support the community is fantastic. So thank you, Steve. Uh, thank really you. appreciate all the work you've done. No, thank, you. Uh, thank you for joining us today at the M4TV and we really appreciate all that you're doing and we wish you well for the elections and continue to do the amazing work that you've been doing. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.